I have a secret. I just planned the cheapest trip to Disney World. And I want you to do the same. So whether you're looking to save a few bucks here and there or you're looking to save hundreds, hang tight as we explore these money-saving tactics here on DFB Guide. Hey everybody, it's AJ for Disney Food Blog. The team and I plan lots of Disney World trips, sometimes super budget, sometimes not. But what if your main goal is to save as much money as possible and still have a great time in the parks? Well, today we're going to look into the five most important categories to consider when you're planning your Disney World vacation and take a look at the cheap, cheaper, and cheapest ways to approach them. Now, if you're like me, you'll want some sort of cheat sheet to refer back to after this video is all said and done. So before you get to planning your most affordable Disney World vacation ever, drop us your email over at disneyfoodblog.com slash WDW cheap, and we'll get the full downloadable copy of everything I talk about here today sent directly to your inbox. Okay, starting with travel. Before you step foot inside the Disney bubble, you're going to have to find a way to actually get there. Between fluctuating gas and flight prices, it's hard to pin down which transportation method is going to save you the most. So let's figure it out together. Each of our sections today is going to have a cheap, cheaper, and cheap way to do it. So here's our cheap section on travel. Let's say you really need to fly because you're all the way over in Timbuktu where you just really can't stand being on the road for an extended period of time with your family. It's okay, we get it. There are a few things you gotta keep in mind to help you get the cheapest flight into Orlando International Airport or MCO. First thing to consider, seasons. If you have control over when you can take your Disney World vacation, it's best to aim for those times Disney and airlines consider to be non-peak times. Mid to late August is historically speaking one of the best times to find cheaper flights since many Many families will be wrapping up their summer vacations and heading back to start up the new school year. Second thing to consider, weekdays. First off, let me get this out of the way. The whole, you need to book a plane on a Tuesday for a cheaper flight. Yeah, it's not that easy. According to CNN, the popular travel myth is just a myth. Flight prices depend on demand, not the day of the week. So early to midweek does tend to be cheaper on off-peak days. And as a rule of thumb, the busier the weekend, the more the flight is going to cost. But that doesn't mean necessarily that Tuesday itself has anything to do with it. It's just how, when people fly and how often they fly. So you're going to want to check those weekdays first for sure, but not a specific one necessarily. Okay, third thing to consider, airlines themselves. This one's tricky because it really depends on what flights are available from your airport. Spirit and Frontier are usually going to provide you with the best flight deals without providing you with extra bells and whistles. Don't expect five stars. You're just getting from point A to point B in the most affordable way possible. These are budget airlines. Keep in mind that your closest airport might not necessarily be your most affordable airport either. Sometimes driving to an airport that's an extra 30 to 60 minutes away might provide a larger range of cheaper flights for you to choose from rather than what your local small town airport can provide. I grew up in a little town in western New York and we always have to check Buffalo, Pittsburgh, and Cleveland to see what's going to be cheapest. Now for airport transportation, once you're in MCO, you're kind of stranded there since you don't have your own vehicle to drive you under the Disney arches and get you to the most magical place on earth, which is about 30 minutes away by vehicle. So that's where part two comes into play. If your main goal is to save as much money as possible, count the rental car option out. Not only are you going to have to drop a pretty penny on the rental, but you're also going to have to pay to park the car when you're staying at a Disney World hotel or driving to the parks. So then your decision comes down to payment preference and how many people you have in your travel group. Mirrors Connect and the Sunshine Flyer shuttles have set prices, so that doesn't mean they're not subject to change later on. For a standard round trip on the Mirrors Express, you're looking at paying around $32 per adult, $27 per child. So for a family of two adults, two kids, that's about $118. Prices are pretty similar for the Sunshine Flyer. A round trip for adults is $34 and a round trip for kids is $25, which gives you a grand total of two adults, two kiddos, $118. How about that? The main difference here, adults' rides are $2 cheaper on the Mirrors Express, while the Sunshine Flyer is $2 cheaper for kids. Ride shares like Uber and Lyft will switch up their prices depending on demand, but that being said, they also don't charge per person like the shuttle systems do. So which is going to save you money? You're going to have to pull out the handy dandy calculator for this one, as well as weigh the pros and cons of each service. We've got a whole post on our website breaking down the different MCO travel methods and talking about their benefits and downfalls. I'll go ahead and link that in the description below for you to study later on. 
Okay, moving on to the cheaper option in our travel to Disney World section. If you plan far enough in advance, you can always hit the road and plan to travel to Disney World via car with maybe a hotel pit stop along the way. This can really end up being an affordable option if you're traveling with a larger group who can all pitch in to pay the hotel bill. It's always a good idea, no matter what the case may be, to book a room as far in advance as possible. The terms flux, fluctuating, surge prices, those are going to come up a lot in this video because travel costs don't stay consistent. Consistent. Gas doesn't, flight rates don't, and hotel rooms change constantly too. But the further out you can book a room, the more chance you'll have on saving some money, since last minute stays are more often than not going to hike up the price. Oh, and if you are staying in a hotel, think about those hotel points. Do you have hotel points you can use? Does your credit card get you hotel points that you can use? How can you potentially get a cheaper hotel rate if you join a loyalty program? All of those are going to affect the hotel price. Maybe not by much, but every little bit counts. Okay, cheapest in our how to get to Disney World section. Maybe you need to drive straight through. For some of you, I understand that's just not going to happen, but I'm talking to all my troopers out there who A, want to avoid airfare, and B, want to avoid paying for an extra night's hotel. So how are we going to avoid spending money on a hotel? Do we really have the stamina to keep going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny until we make it to our Disney World hotel? Time to set up a game plan. Step one, you're going to have to start early in the day. The earlier, the better. Think of this as your first rope drop of the trip. This will allow you to pace things out and take stretch breaks along the way. The general consensus among lots of travelers is that you should try to take a 15 minute break every two hours you drive to keep your muscles from getting too tense and maybe to stay awake. Step two, plan on traveling with more than one registered driver. That way you can rotate out drivers after each pit stop to prevent one from getting too exhausted and needing the hotel break. When drivers are off their driving duties, they can use the opportunity to take a quick cat nap or just take it easy until it's time for their next shift. And step three, have lots of snacks and food packed to prevent having to stop and waste time and spend more money on fast food along the way. Now I can hear your bank account sighing with a relief already. So hopefully one of these three less expensive options is going to be the one that works for you. Okay, hotel time. We've made it to Disney World without costing us an arm and a leg, but the challenges to save money have only just begun. What about your hotel during the course of your stay? How are you going to save the most money at a home away from home while also avoiding sketchy motels with the suspicious stains and musty moldy smells? We got you. One major thing to keep in mind about all the hotels and places to stay that I'm about to list is timing. Like I mentioned before, the sooner you can book your room at these places, the better because you never know A, when they're gonna sell out or B, their prices are gonna hike up again. So the cheap option in this section, Disney World has a range of hotels you can choose to stay in, but their value resorts are gonna be the least costly of the on-site hotels. Does that mean they're gonna be a steal? No, value resorts are usually still gonna cost you more than your average Holiday Inn or Hampton Inn, and during peak seasons, they might still end up costing you over $200 per night to stay in. That's not cheap. So let's see if we can find the cheapest times to stay at these value resorts if you simply have to stay on Disney World property. Let's say we're traveling with two adults and two kids during Disney World's downtime. We talked up August in the previous point, so let's do that again. If you book a room at one of Disney's all-star resorts, aka all-star movies, music, or sports, for the last week of August, a standard room's gonna cost you around $141 per night, which actually isn't too shabby for a Disney World hotel, especially when you consider that you'll have complimentary transportation to and from the parks and resorts while you're there as well as early theme park entry which is going to get you into any of the parks on any day 30 minutes before the parks officially open. Just keep in mind that if you bring your car you will have to pay for parking at the hotels which at the values is going to run you about $15 per night. But did you know there's a potentially cheaper option when it comes to staying at a Disney-owned property? If you're big into the camping scene, or at least own a tent, camper, some combination of the two, you can rent a campsite on the Disney's Fort Wilderness campgrounds for less than a room at one of the value resorts. You can rent out your own campsite area and live in the great outdoors during that end of August season for around $74 to $131 per night. Ain't nothing like the great outdoors to ease your soul, right? And your pocketbook, maybe. Not only is this option cheaper and allows you to have a camping trip and Disney trip all in one, but it still gives you all those extra Disney World Resort benefits, including the early theme park entry and complimentary transportation to the parks. You'll also get complimentary standard parking at the campsite for one of your group's vehicles. 
also. And don't forget to look at Disney World's special offers, deals, and discounts page on their website. They'll feature updated hotel and ticket savings you can apply toward your purchase. Also, I hope by now you are subscribed to our newsletter. On our newsletter, we tell you all of the huge discounts and deals we find around the hotels and in the Orlando area. And we even send out a little warning article if we're getting close to the end of an opportunity to save so that you can get right on that if that's something you want to do. Not too keen on the whole roughing it mindset? Is it still possible to get a hotel room under $141 that's a little bit more indoors and a lot less, you know, foresty? Okay, your cheaper option when you're choosing your hotel. All-Star Resorts set the bar at 141, but how low can we go? Sorry, you're not gonna find a cheaper hotel than that for Disney-owned resorts. But you might be able to find some through Good Neighbor Hotels. Now, Disney's Good Neighbor Hotels partner with Disney to provide savings and Disney World perks for guests. They're the kind of neighbors you'd want living on your street who won't yell at you to get off their lawn. Now, Good Neighbor Hotels can still be a bit pricey depending on where you book, but we found the lineup of the most affordable ones for you because we want to be good neighbors too, or at the very least, reliable researchers. Same rules apply here. I'm still basing this office day at the end of August from August 24th to 30th to be specific for two kids and two adults. First off, let's look at residence in Lake Buena Vista. You can snag a one bedroom, two room suite with two queen beds and a sofa bed for about 135 per night. See, a little lower than the Disney Value Resorts. But I'm not talking about a standard room. I'm talking about a suite. This room, a room that's cheaper than Disney's lowest value standard room, comes with a fully equipped kitchen that has a refrigerator, stove top, microwave, dishwasher, silverware, pots and pans, and dishes and glasses. That way, if you wanna save money on food, you can always choose to buy a few groceries at a nearby store and whip yourself up something real nice back in the room. And you could even get a frozen pizza for around five bucks, pop that bad boy in your oven and feed your family for less than you'd normally pay for a snack on Disney World property. Then we've got Rosen in Lake Buena Vista, which has a deluxe bedroom that can actually sleep up to five if you've got an extra person to add to the party for an advance rate of $85 per night. Okay, here's an actual hotel room for under $100. Look at us go. This hotel's got a lot of added perks that'll help save you big buckaroos for like free parking, free shuttle access to the parks, and a kids eat free program that'll allow a child five and under to eat at their boardwalk buffet restaurant for free with the purchase of an adult meal. Now, just a heads up, we don't know these hotels. We haven't stayed at these hotels. These are not recommendations. I'm just helping you to see the price tags of some of these good neighbor hotels. So definitely go to the Disney World website, look at their good neighbor hotel section and see what's available out there. Check those reviews, see which ones get good reviews and then you can make your choices now i could keep going but there are a lot of good neighbor hotels like over 40 so i'll add the good neighbor hotel link down in the description so you can look into them more in depth on your own okay we've made it to our cheapest section for hotels let's say you want to break away from the disney hotels and the good neighbors to see if you can really test the flexibility of this limbo game can we get any lower than 85 dollars per night in orlando well sure if you're willing to really do that research now it's tough for me to flat out recommend an Airbnb and call it the best day ever because rentals outside that Disney bubble or Disney's group of recommended resorts can definitely be hit or miss for sure. But they can still save you money and they might end up being really, really awesome for you and your travel group. Now, before you jump on those, be sure to do your research, check out reviews, and find the best quality stay for the best price. I personally use Verbo and Airbnb all the time, and it can be a little bit difficult to find the right houses. I always look for houses that have multiple five-star reviews, and I even check out reviews on third-party sites sometimes too. So definitely do your research on those. Okay, you've arrived, you're lounging on your hotel bed, you're thinking about the trip ahead of you, jam-packed with Disney World Park activities. So what do those upcoming days look like for you? And how are you going to make sure you can experience all you want to experience at Disney World while also saving some big bucks? Okay, great question. Let's assess. One major thing to remember, your tickets need to be purchased before you're lying on the hotel bed in your Disney World hotel. Like, pretty far in advance, my friends. Otherwise, you might miss out on making your park pass reservations. If the parks book up solid, you don't want that to be an issue you have to deal with. And you'll also miss out on any potential savings you can snag ahead of time too. and We definitely don't want that. So can you buy your park tickets at the gate? Yeah. Do you want to? No, because you need your park passes, right? And those sell out early. So let's go to our cheap option here. Let's piggyback off of what I just said. Where can you find ticket savings? Well, some places you can find Disney World Resort savings on the special offers, deals, and discounts page on the Disney World website. But if you don't want to miss out because, you know, you're not going to live on the internet just waiting for the best deals to pop up, there are two things you can do instead. 
One, you can work with a travel agent like Small World Vacations. They'll keep an eye out on the best Disney World savings for you and help you apply it to your trip. Why do we recommend Small World? Well, I've known the owner for a really, really long time. She's super cool and her agents are truly, truly excellent. So mostly I think it's just a high quality organization. They run things really well. They do a really good job. Now, two, you can drop us your email at disneyfoodblog.com slash WDW cheap, and we can send you not only a list of everything I'm talking about here today, but also get you automatically signed up for our newsletter. And that's what's going to tap, tap, tap your shoulder whenever a good Disney World deal comes knocking on the door. The best part about these two strategies, totally free. Now, I've already talked your ear off about fluctuating travel and hotel prices, but Disney World park tickets vary in cost too, depending on when you visit. So let's say you and the fam are visiting all four parks using single day tickets. I looked at the cheapest rates for each month for the remainder of the year, and here's what I found. August is going to be your cheapest option, no shocker there, with ticket prices at the end of the month ranging between 106 and 108 per day. The beginning of September follows August suit with similar price ranges. And the cheapest time to visit during November, aka the kickoff to the Christmas season, is going to be around that second week or last week of the month, with prices being around $127 a day. Of course, you're avoiding that Thanksgiving week. Now, keep in mind that these prices reflect four single day tickets worth of value. If you decide to hit up fewer days in the park, these price changes will increase. For example, I can pay $106 for four days worth of park tickets, but if I decide I only want two days worth at the end of August, I'm looking at spending more, around $107 to $119 per day instead. Basically, the longer you're visiting the parks, the cheaper your tickets will be. Or as Disney likes to say, the longer you play, the less you pay per day. Okay, cheaper. Four parks, four tickets, that sounds kind of not cheap, especially if you're having to pay for more than one person in your party. So let's get that down by half. How about a weekend trip? Not only are you saving money on your resort stay, but you'll only have to focus on two ticket purchases. Pick two of the four parks you like best or you believe you'll like best if this is your first time visiting and save the other parks for another time. I've got videos covering what each of the parks has to offer. If you'd like to check those out, they might help you get to a decision. That's their goal at least. But let's say you really, really, really want to hit up all the parks during your weekend trip. You can hit up two parks per day thanks to the handy dandy park hopper option. Park hoppers are a $65 add-on price to your standard theme park ticket that'll allow you to visit multiple parks in one day. After 2 p.m. that is. Before 2 p.m you got to visit the park you made your park pass reservation for. But after 2 p.m., it's free game, baby. Go out and explore. If you were to add park hoppers to your standard theme park ticket during Disney's cheapest ticket season for an August weekend trip for a family of two adults, two kiddos, you'll be looking at paying around $1,317 in park hopper tickets. Yep, still a pretty pricey endeavor, but if you're on a weekend getaway with some friends and you only plan on paying for your own tickets, then a weekend worth of park hopping fun will run you around $334, which might be a little easier to swap. Follow. You could save even more on tickets by choosing one theme park and one water park instead. Currently, Disney's Typhoon Lagoon is the only water park open. Since Blizzard Beach is undergoing a major 2022 refurbishment for the foreseeable future, but a ticket to visit Typhoon Lagoon and hit up all their water rides, wave, pool, lazy river, that's going to cost you between $64 and $69 for everyone over the age of 10 and 58 and 63 for everyone between the ages of three to nine. Okay, cheapest option here with tickets. Hear me out. You're still doing a weekend trip, right? Then what if you just hit up one park, your favorite of the bunch, and use your other day as a hotel day? You could roam Disney Springs, take advantage of your hotel pool, or try one of the hotel's complimentary activities like watching a movie under the stars, competing in trivia games, or even lounging in a hammock beachside, one of my favorite things to do at Disney hotels. Now, some of you might love the idea of taking it easy on that second day, and some of you are going, one park? Really, AJ? Why am I even going? Unfortunately, sometimes the cheapest type of Disney trip means making a few sacrifices along the way. However, if you still want to try to hit up all four parks, you could consider going all out and getting a one-day park hopper ticket in an attempt to see them all in a single day. It is very doable, my friends, but it is a long day. And if you're doing that as a first-time visitor, plan on only riding one ride in each park. Make sure you know which ride you want to ride in each park and then anything else you do is gravy okay time to talk food ah oh, yeah you knew it had to happen disney food blogs coming in hot with the food advice as much as we love to eat in disney world and i mean love love to eat in disney world we also know it can be one of the pricier endeavors of this trip so let's get ready to satisfy your tummy grumbles with the cheapest food options around and hopefully they're high quality too that's why you follow us so our cheap option for this section first and foremost let's talk discounts orlando area restaurant loyalty programs can help disney guests save money 
while dining around the parks, hotels, or Disney Springs. Now, I'm only gonna cover a few loyalty program discounts here now, but you can get the whole chapter full of them in the 2022 DFB Guide to Walt Disney World Dining at dfbstore.com. Yeah, it's a long chapter. There's a lot of discount options. Here are a few you might wanna consider signing up for. The Levy Loyalty Program will help you save on Disney Springs restaurants like Paddlefish and Terralina's Crafted Italian. Landry's Loyalty Program does something similar, helping you save on Disney's Animal Kingdom restaurants like Yak and Yeti and Rainforest Cafe. You can also save money on the Rainforest Cafe in Disney Springs and T-Rex too. You'll receive an extra $25 reward for signing up and during your birthday month. Blaze Pizza in Disney Springs has its own mobile app that you can download, which will send offers like buy one pizza, get one free. Same goes with Earl of Sandwich in Disney Springs. You download their app, you'll get signed up for birthday rewards and other sandwich royalty club offers. And the Bettina Restaurant Group, which owns and runs lots of restaurants on Disney property, offers email subscription perks, which send guests offers, deals, and coupons to their inboxes. Their restaurants in Disney Springs include the Edison, Enzo's Hideaway, Maria and Enzo's Ristorante, Pizza Ponte, and Morimoto Asia. And over at Epcot, their restaurants are all the Italy Pavilion restaurants, Via Napoli, Tutto Gusto, and Tutto Italia. Okay, so that's gonna save you a little bit of money on food. Let's go even deeper into the discount space. What are the most affordable places to eat in the parks? Well, of course, we're gonna talk counter service. Now in Magic Kingdom, Casey's Corner on Main Street USA is gonna have some tasty and cheap-ish eats. Food over at the Friar's Nook in Fantasyland is gonna help break away from the strictly hot dog options and give you something a little more cheesy with its loaded tot options. And in Liberty Square, you've got the Sleepy Hollow Refreshments kiosk, which appears unassuming, but has some filling and very, very unique waffle sandwiches for you to grab on the go. Those are also pretty shareable. Now I have a hard time recommending this one because the food is basic, but I'm gonna be honest, technically one of the cheapest places to eat in Hollywood Studios, located off Sunset Boulevard, is Catalina Eddie's. This is Pillow Pizza Central, y'all, but if you really do want to go the whole cheese puffy pizza route, then I might suggest walking a little further back to the Muppets Courtyard area to go to Pizza Rizzo. That offers the same exact things with a more vibrant and witty and air-conditioned atmosphere. Because if you're going to eat mediocre pizza, you might as well be laughing at the inside jokes posted on the walls. If you're not in a pizza mood, but everyone else in your family is, you can also order a meatball sub with seasoned and meatballs, marinara sauce, provolone, a pizza Rizzo for the same price as a cheese pizza. One of the better, cheaper, quick services in Hollywood Studios is Woody's Lunchbox over at Toy Story Land, which has those loaded tachos, or tater tot nachos, that the DFB team loves so much. Now here's a fun hack in general for you. If you're not super hungry, but you're still looking for something cheap to eat for lunch, you can order from the kids' menus at these quick service locations and get a very similar, if not the exact same, type of offering for less. So if you've really got a hankering for some grilled cheese at Woody's Lunchbox, get the half order off the kids' menu served with a mandarin orange potato barrels, which are tots, and a drink, all for $6.19. And I will tell you, very, very honestly, the kids' meals at Disney World are plenty of food for an adult to eat normally. If that's your only meal of the day, it's not. But if you're eating, you know, a couple of meals in a day, this is going to be just fine. I regularly order the kids' chicken nugget meals at hotels, and it's plenty of food for me for that meal. And I run Disney Food Blog, so you know I can eat. Okay, now it's often pretty busy, but Pachosa de Margarita in Epcot has some affordable small plates for you to munch on if you can resist the temptation of ordering a margarita or two alongside them, of course, which would more than double the cost of your meal. It's also not a bad idea to make the festival booths into meals throughout the day. Check and see what festival, if any, is happening during the time of your visit and study up on all the different offerings. Festival food prices vary, but you can always keep track of how much you're spending on food by preloading a Disney gift card and using it on the food booths around the World Showcase. To save extra money on Disney gift cards before you even get into the parks, you can purchase them ahead of time at Target. That's right, Target. If you're a Target red card holder, you can save 5% on any of your Target purchases, which includes Disney gift cards, meaning you can actually spend money to get more money in return. And of course, I'm gonna shout out my ride or die mac and cheese palace over at Disney's Animal Kingdom, Eight Spoon Cafe. Though these cups of baked mac and cheese should be considered snack sized, they're also really filling. And because we can't ever fully escape those puffy pizzas, as you can find them again over at Pizza Fari in Dinoland USA for the same price you would in Disney's Hollywood Studios. Need a tasty and affordable fry basket fix? Mr. Kamal's kiosk in the Asia section of the park has seasoned fries with saffron aioli, honey kimchi ketchup, and tandoori honey mustard dipping sauces for $5.99. You can also snag chicken dumplings here for the same price. And lastly, when it's open, the Smiling Crocodile Kiosk in Animal Kingdom has a variety of street tacos that come with two tacos each and are served with a side of chips and salsa for $9.99. 
Now, cheapest for food, whether you're paying for the cheapest Disney World food that the parks have to offer or not, paying for theme park food is still paying for theme park food, and it is expensive no matter what. So you can save your bank account the heartache by packing your own food. Disney's totally fine with you smuggling in your own snacks and lunches, as long as the foods don't need to be kept frozen or need to be heated up in a microwave to enjoy. Sorry, Lean Cuisines, you are not making the cut. Here are 10 foods for you to consider buying at your local grocery store and packing into your park bag. We love the granola bars, the trail mix, Uncrustables or pre-made PB&J sandwiches. Those are really, really good if you freeze them and then stick them in your park bag and then they thaw throughout the day, just like your kid's lunch when you send it to school. Sandwiches that can be well-preserved in a cooling bag are good because no one wants to eat a lukewarm turkey sandwich, right? Peanut butter crackers, mini muffins, bagels, mixed veggies and fruits like carrots and celery sticks, grapes, peelable fruits like bananas or mandarin oranges, stuff like that. Bags of chips are good. Disney themed munchies like goldfish crackers, cookies, foodles, and applesauce tubs, cups, or pouches are great too. And don't forget to pack your reusable water bottle. There are several refill stations around the parks for you to rehydrate free of charge. But if you're coming up dry and can't find a nearby refill station, you can always ask one of the quick service locations for a complimentary water cup instead. Now let's talk for a quick second about saving money during Epcot's Food and Wine Festival this year. The DFB Guide to the 2022 Epcot Food and Wine Festival is gonna let you know what food and drinks are gonna be the best bang for your buck. Head over to dfbstore.com, pre-order your digital copy today. If the guide isn't everything you'd hoped for, just let us know within the next 30 days, we'll give you a full refund. You can also save money on your purchase by typing in the code YouTube before you check out. All right, moving on to souvenirs. What's a Disney trip without a little memento to remember it by, right? Yeah, only here's the problem. Even the tiniest Disney souvenir like magnets, keychains, and pins can get really expensive. Good thing there's a plan B, C, and even D to turn to. Let's start with the cheap souvenirs. Before you drop that moolah at one of the Disney gift shops on property, it's best to double check with the Shop Disney website. Make sure you can't get something there for cheaper. Shop Disney often features Disney Park merchandise on their website. Sometimes you'll even find exclusive Epcot Festival merch there too. And because the website is usually running some sort of special sale or deal, there's a good chance you'll be able to order that bag, shirt, or hat you've been eyeballing for cheaper. Keep an eye especially on their twice a year sale when a lot of things are 50% off. Okay, cheaper souvenirs. Disney knows how to market to your tiny tykes. Even if you're trying to avoid going inside the gift shop so kids aren't tempted to start grabbing things off the shelves, Disney still finds ways to market their products outside the shops too. You'll see cast members pushing along carts with bubble wands and glow toys, or you'll be forced to trudge through a gift shop as you're exiting the rides, which is why you'll need to be prepared. Your local dollar stores, big box stores, and maybe even toy stores will have very similar off-brand items that you can purchase to have on hand when the gimme 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 start bubbling up. If your kiddo's young enough, there's a good chance they're not gonna know the difference between Mickey ears you grabbed from Walmart and the $30 pair in the Disney World gift shop. I'm not saying that's always the case, but you know, if you can save big bucks on items kids are gonna love no matter how much money you spend on them, it's best to try and save that moolah first rather than cough up the cash for every little plush and every little costume piece, right? Right. And the cheapest souvenirs, real talk here, don't buy anything extra. I'm serious, just don't buy a souvenir. In fact, don't buy any add-ons, period. Disney can pitch all they want about how nifty Disney Genie Plus is, or how the new Magic Band Plus is gonna enhance your park experience tenfold, or how you need this certain popcorn bucket. It's limited edition and brand new, and you need to get it before it's gone forever. But in the end, no one's twisting your arm and forcing you to buy anything other than the bare basics of your trip. Extras add up fast and are one of the easiest ways to overspend and blow your budget. So if you really want to do the cheapest Disney trip, don't give in to the temptation. Ride the ride, see the shows, admire the details, take a dip in your resort pool, and enjoy your time without having to worry about adding another Disney-fied mug or accessory to your collection. Believe me, a lot of the stuff people buy in Disney World just ends up in the closet when they get home. They don't use it again, and a lot of the time they don't even see it again until they're donating it or throwing it out. So really think hard about whether or not you need that pair of mini ears or what in the world you're gonna do with that popcorn bucket when you get home, right? Right. 
So planning the cheapest Disney World trip possible can be a challenge for sure. If not just because you gotta find the sheer willpower to pull it off, but it's not impossible. And if you need a refresher on how to save the big bucks on your trip, using the points we talked about today, drop your email over at disneyfoodblog.com slash WDW cheap. And we're gonna send you this complete cheat sheet for free of money saving strategies. Thanks for listening, everyone. Thanks for watching. Please drop your tips in the comments below. As I say all the time, our viewers, the people that follow our channel, learn so much from each other. So it's really, really helpful if you have a tip that we didn't include here, just drop it in the comments for everyone to see as well. And it'll be very, very helpful for them too to save some cash on their trip. As always, this is AJ for Disney Food Blog, and we'll see you real soon.